Hey guys, it's Kayla here. So I'm out in my shop trying to get some work done. Um, I figured I'd just take a break and try to make a somewhat quick video for you guys because my phone has been blowing up uh, for the last five years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, my phone has been blowing up nonstop though, and especially more so since all these uh, knife making shows and forging shows have been coming out. And it's just, uh, it's people that are all asking the same questions. Hey, I'm getting into knife making. I want to know what, what do I need to get started? And as much as I would love to write back to each and every one of you guys, I just honestly, um, I just don't have the time and I feel, I feel awful about it. I genuinely wish that I could write back to, you know, each and every one of you guys. But I am a one woman shop out here. I'm trying to make the product on my own, uh, package it up, ship it out, you know, reply to customers, reply to uh, people on my social media and, you know, run my website. And it's just, it's a lot. And then, you know, on top of all of that stuff, I'm a mom. I have dogs that are more of a handful than my kid is. And then, you know, I'm taking care of my sick mom as well. And it's just a lot. So I appreciate all you guys that understand that. And, you know, it sucks. I feel bad because I, you know, I get some people that give me shit about it and they're like, you you know, you never, you never take the time to reply to all of us. And I'm like, there's so many, I just can't keep up. I'm sorry. I feel bad. I try, I really do try my best, you know, to write back to everybody and be as helpful as I can. But I figured, you know, if I make this video, hopefully I can answer some of the general questions that you guys are asking. And, um, I'll just go over like the basic stuff, but truly such a hard question to answer. What do I need to get into knife making? Because there's so many different things that you guys need. Um, there's so many different ways you guys can make a knife, so many different variations, and everybody does everything differently. So I figure I'll tell you guys the basics, um, and I'll go over what I use, what I started out with, um, and hopefully I can give you guys some like tips and tricks, some helpful information for when you're first getting started, you know, that saved me some time and energy. Okay, so when you're first starting out, whether you're doing forging or stock removal, you guys are going to need, you know, three basic things. You're going to need steel, a forge, and a grinder. So let's start out with steel. You're going to want to start out using high carbon steel. You're more than welcome to use stainless steel, but then you get into, you know, having to use uh, different ovens so that you can properly heat treat it. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go over steel. So if you don't have a bunch of money to invest in steel starting out, you can always go to yard sales, antique shops, the junkyard. Um, I started out using lawnmower blades, old files like Nicholson files or like rasp files. Um, and then also you can use like leaf springs. You can get leaf springs at old junkyards. So those are your options. You know, if you, if you don't have a ton of money to spend, I get these at yard sales and antique shops and they're like a buck or two a piece. Um, and I know also people are always like railroad spikes make shit knives. I agree. I'm not disagreeing. They, they don't make the best knives, but if you're first starting out, use some railroad spikes. I'm not saying go and break the law and take some railroad spikes from active tracks. I, I hate even talking about railroad spikes because it's just like people go off on these stupid tangents, but if you can find them and legally find them and use them, um, use them. They're, they're great to, uh, to use to get started. It's an easy way to learn how to manipulate the steel and get familiar with it and also get familiar with your anvil. Um, and it's free, you know, you usually don't have to, uh, to pay for them. So anyways, if you have the money to invest in good steel, you can get it from New Jersey Steel Bearing. That's who I use, um, for, for the company to get my steel. And I get like, I just ordered, uh, you know, two sheets of 1095, as you guys can see right there. You can also get, um, round bar stock and use that. And you know, that's like a couple hundred bucks, depending on what you use types of steel that you can use to get started. Uh, 1095 is great. 1084 is great. 5160, all good steel. So that's just a, a couple, um, that you guys can look at to get started. So if you're going to use stainless steel, this is when we get into forges. So my forge, um, I got a hundred dollar forge. It's just a single burner propane forge that I got off of Craigslist. I've been using it for like seven years. The thing is it's lasted the entire time, you know, that I've been knife making. It just barely shit the bed on me, you know, you know, like two months ago and I had to get a new one. Um, and I ended up getting another propane single burner forge off of Craigslist. So this is what I had and what I was using. 
Now, if you guys have the time and the money to build your own, build your own. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people ask about that, but I did not, I did not have the time or the money. So I just ended up buying one off of Craigslist. It was a hundred bucks. Good investment. So that's that. And it doesn't really work well anymore. So I ended up getting this off of Amazon, as you guys can see. And that works great. So if you're going to be doing stainless steel um, and you want to heat treat them yourself, you need to get a good oven. So I was, uh, if I did do stainless steel, what I would do is I'd have to send it out to somebody and pay, you pay like five to $10 per blade, you know, depending on where you send it. Um, but I finally, I saved up all my money and got an even heat oven and I was super excited about that. So now I can finally do like my own stainless steel knives and I don't have to send them out or anything. <clears throat> so steel forge, like I said, if you can make your own, absolutely do it. And you can watch like there's you, there's nothing that you can't find online guys. So go on Google, type in how to make a forge. You can watch a video. There's a bazillion different ways that you can make a forge. Um, but if you guys, like I said, don't have the time or the money, just go online on like Amazon Craigslist and you can buy one. And, uh, propane forges are great. Um, that's what I've used for the last seven years and they work really well. All right. And then a grinder, you're going to need a grinder. So when I first started out, I got a one by 30 from Harbor Freight. It did the trick, but honestly it didn't, I didn't keep it around for very long because the problem with those is if you push too hard on the belt, it seizes up the motor. So you really can't, you know, it's a, you're, you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to grind away metal. Um, so if you can invest in a good grinder right off the bat, do that. I think the most expensive thing that you're going to have out in your shop is probably your grinder. So save up your money, get a good grinder. Um, I used a grizzly grinder and I can't even remember how much that was to start, but it was, it was good, but I couldn't change out like the wheel attachments or anything. So I ended up upgrading from that after I saved up all my money and I got, a. let me see. Sorry for moving you guys around so much, but I got, um, an LB 1000 from Wilmot Grinders. I apologize for how messy my shop is, guys. I, I really am sorry. Um, everybody's always like, I want to come out to your shop. It looks awesome. It looks so big. I'm like, oh no, it's not <laughs> like I can barely fit out here. This is uh, I'll give you guys a quick tour of my shop. Okay. This is. <laughs> that's it it's a 10 by 12 shed and I can barely fit out here so I apologize it's super super messy right now and I'm not trying to make you guys sick by flinging you around but I want to be able to show you guys what I'm talking about as well so anyways this is my uh my LB 1000 from Wilmont you can change the different um, wheel attachments. So I have like my hollow grinding wheel. I just recently got um, contouring wheels, which were, oh my gosh, I wish I had bought these sooner because up until then I was using uh, a Dremel to do all of like my finger grooves and stuff like that. Holy shit, that's, that's time consuming. <laughs> so if you want to do like, you know, get in there and use the, the smaller wheel attachment to do all these finger grooves and stuff like that, it's definitely worth it. So those are like the three main things that you guys are going to need. So steel, uh, forge, and a grinder. Go to Harbor Freight. You can get, I know a lot of people knock on Harbor Freight, but it's really not that bad. You can get, you know, a lot of equipment for reasonable prices. Um, and I've gotten a lot of stuff from there that's held up, you know, pretty decent. But depending on your equipment, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy a grinder from there. Your grinder's your most important thing out in the shop, in my opinion. So, uh, invest in that, um, above everything else. So smaller things that you guys are going to need, you're going to be doing handles for your knives. Um, you know, unless you're, you're forging and you're not putting handles on your knives, you're doing like a, a pretty swirly tang or whatever. <laughs> um, but if you're going to do handles, you're going to need a drill press definitely comes in handy because you're going to need to drill some holes, handle material. That's like a whole nother video that we could do because there's, a bazillion different handle materials that you guys can use. Um, there's Kiranite, G10, Micarta, wood, 
There's hybrid material, which is like kieranite and wood um, mixed together. You know, there's antler, there's bone, there's honestly, there's a million different choices that you can use. So everybody's like, well, what do you use for handle material? I've used, I've used just about everything. My favorite thing to do is, um, use G10. Um, I love G10. I think it's really easy to work with. When I first started out, I'm so glad somebody suggested this to me. It's, um, from USA Knife Makers and it's a scrap box of handle material and that way you can sample all the different kinds of material and it's super great because you're not going to be wasting a bunch of money on um, handle material because and, and, it, and it gets you very familiar with the material as well because it honestly it adds up after a while especially when you get into like the fancier um, stuff so do that go on USA Knife Maker I think it's like 60 bucks for a box and you get like Kieranite, Micarta, G10, like all, all kinds of different things. And it's just, it's good practice and it'll get you familiar um, with what works best for you. So look into that. And I'm pretty sure it's on USA Knife Maker. Um, and then you're going to need like handle hardware. You're going to need super glue. You're going to need clamps, all of that stuff to do the handles. Then if you guys are going to be doing your own sheets, you can do leather, you can do Kydex. Um, that's like a another a whole nother thing. It's so hard. This is what I'm talking about because there's there's uh there's so many different things that you guys can use and do. It's hard to answer the question without you know going into a million different things. But like I said, I'll try to keep it you know as general as I can and just give you guys some ideas. So you're gonna need um, a press. I mostly I don't I don't really work with leather. I would love to get into it more, but I mostly just work with Kydex. I get all of my Kydex from Index Fasteners. They have a huge variety of different things to choose from. You can get pretty much anything you want put on your Kydex. Um, they're inexpensive, great company, excellent customer service. But I'll show you guys. So uh, this is my dusty Kydex. I got a bunch over there, and then you're gonna need um, a press. You can buy one online. I made my own, and then I just bought the foam for it and put it in. Um, and then you're going to need, like, a uh, a rivet press as well. God, my shop is so messy. <laughs> you can get that online. And then, of course, you have your rivets for your Kydex. Um, and you're going to need your drill press to drill the holes and stuff, you know, for the rivets as well. So, other things. Let's see. Um, a Dremel, definitely invest in a Dremel. I've gone through like three or four Dremels in the last seven years. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to take a look at my workbench and get some ideas for you guys. Um, tape measure, always good to have. Clamps. Um, let's see. I have a sandblast cabinet. That's good for different finishes. I don't really use it that often though. I have a tumbler. Those definitely come in handy. Um, I got mine from Harbor Freight. Uh, let me see. I have a smaller one here. And then I ended up getting a bigger one so I could do like bigger size knives. And those are great because you can do uh, that nice stone wash finish. But if you guys don't have the money to invest in a tumbler right now, and you still want to get that stone wash finish look, you can take a PVC pipe. This is what I did when I first started out and didn't have the money for this stuff. And I would put rocks in there and then my knife and I would just shake it up. And that worked fine. I've even used like uh, soda bottles, like big soda bottles that I emptied out and cleaned and put rocks in there. And I did that. So honestly, just work with what you have, you know, until you can save up enough money to get the stuff that's going to make your life easier. So let's see, obviously you guys need an anvil and a hammer, um, an angle grinder. That's what I used when I first started out to cut out, you know, all my handle material, my steel. And, uh, when I got enough money, I got a bandsaw. Um, you don't necessarily need a bandsaw though, but it does make your life easier, especially for cutting out handle material. Um, because it just, it makes a crazy mess, especially like G10 and stuff like that. So an angle grinder, I got this at my local hardware store. It's a Ryobi and, uh, and it works great. I think it was like 35, 40 bucks. Uh, let's see, a heat gun. I have a Wagner heat gun. Also got this at my local hardware store. 
And I think that was like 40 bucks, maybe something like that. I'm probably way off on the prices. I don't even remember. I've had them for so long now. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Whew. Anyways. Yeah. So a lot of people actually use toaster ovens as well. You can use a toaster oven. I, unfortunately, I just don't have any room out here or enough power to, to run it. You know, it's hard enough as it is out here trying to run multiple equipment um, without tripping the breaker. But yeah, so um, also things that you can use for finishes. I have acid. Um, I get a uh, PCB etchant from Radio Shack. It's like 11 bucks a bottle. Unfortunately, all the Radio Shacks went out of business where I live. So I stocked up as much as I can, but I don't even know if Radio Shack's still in business anymore. But yeah, so I was using uh, acid to do, you know, get that dark finish on my knives, as you guys can see. And then I have mustard out here. I have a video on um, how to do a, a mustard patina so you can get like a different cool design, pattern, etch, all of that great stuff. Um, I, I use 550 paracord to do lanyards um, or to wrap my handles. You know, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I'm just trying to, you know, think of like basic things. Oh, belts, you're, you're going to need belts. Um, I get all of my belts from Combat Abrasives. Awesome company. Again, great customer service and great, great product. So you can check them out. Um, handle material. Honestly, when I go to the trade shows, that's where I get a ton of my handle material. I just stock up on that. And uh, lots of G10, um, lots of wood, you know, stag. So this is what I'm working on right now. I forged these out and then threw a uh, antler handle on there, as you guys can see. But yeah, and you're gonna, you're definitely gonna want safety equipment, so a respirator, safety glasses, um, invest in earplugs. I got a whole tub of them up there. Um, I am super deaf from not only like my equipment and stuff out here, but I did competition shooting for years and I did not wear my earplugs properly. So <laughs> that was a poor choice on my part. But yeah, when you have like your tumbler and your grinder and all the other stuff going out here, um, protect your ears. So be safe. I got all my equipment from uh, 3M. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, um, first, what I recommend is jumping on YouTube. When I first started out, I watched a shit ton of YouTube tutorials. I just spent all of my free time watching YouTube tutorials. I was working three jobs, um, and my boss would have killed me if she knew that I was doing this, but when I was at work and it was really slow, I would watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I'd go on the forums, um, jump on the, the knife maker groups and stuff on Facebook, because if there's, you know, if you ask me or somebody else and we can't answer the question, there's there's a, a hundred other people that can help you guys out. So, yeah, I suggest, you know, joining all of the, the knife making groups. You can get a bunch of great information on there, knife forums, and then there's truly nothing that you can't find online these days. So check out YouTube videos. YouTube tutorials are great. And if there's anything that you guys specifically want to see from me, um, leave me a comment. And if there's enough of you that want to see it, I'm always more than happy to make videos and try to help you guys out. So anyways, hopefully this, this helped, you know, a little bit and answered some of your questions. I, I hope that it does or did. And, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, leave me a comment. And like I said, I'll do my best to get back to you guys and reply, but I love you guys. Thank you as always for the support and dude, have fun making knives. I think that this is amazing that there are more people getting into it. I especially want to see more women getting into this, um, industry. I absolutely love that. And I love seeing kids getting involved doing it. I got my little girl that's been coming out here helping me and it's just like, the, it's the greatest thing ever. So, but you know, just be aware for warning. It is an expensive hobby. I am by no means rich. I am actually super poor. Um, everyone thinks that, you know, it's, it's so great owning your own company and, uh, and working for yourself and it, it's definitely got its pros and cons, but I didn't get, you know, where I am without busting my ass to get here. You know, I'm out here seven days a week working super hard and, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not rich by any means. 
but I get to do something that I absolutely love every single day. So I'm not complaining. You know, I, I wake up in the morning and I'm genuinely happy, you know, to, to go out to my shop and, you know, make beautiful knives that, well, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful knives, you know, that, um, that I'm making from the heart, you know? So anyways, that sounds so corny, but it's true. I, I really do love what I do and I'm very, you know, I'm grateful. So I love seeing you guys getting into it and I love when you guys share, you know, your knife making stories and your knives and all of that stuff with me as well. So thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry if it was just like rambling and rants, but anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of your day guys and I will see you guys soon. All right. Bye.